Hey, I'm Hannah Weiss, the Director of Education at the Science Museum of Western Virginia, and this is your moment of STEM. And as we move out of spooky season into kind of the more less spooky <laughs> parts of the year, I thought it might be fun to merge one last kind of scary topic with some more local science. So today we're going to talk about epizootic hemorrhagic disease. Apparently right now I'm just really into epidemics. So epizootic hemorrhagic disease is a disease that affects deer. It's endemic to the United States, meaning that you pretty much find it all over the United States or at least within the United States. And it's really two viruses, epizootic hemorrhagic disease and blue tongue disease or blue tongue virus. But these two viruses cause symptoms that are so similar that most researchers and wildlife officials kind of just call it one disease. Now, the really, really interesting thing about this is that it's moving towards Roanoke. So you've always kind of found this disease in Virginia, but not usually this far into the Blue Ridge Mountains. But recently, as recently actually as 2016, it started kind of popping up in Virginia, which means that something is changing. So what is it? Well, it's a hemorrhagic fever, which when these happen in people, it's kind of the stuff of nightmares. In humans, there are four viral families that cause hemorrhagic fever. Uh, Ebola actually is, is considered a hemorrhagic fever. There are a lot of differences between these viruses, but in order to be called a hemorrhagic disease, it means that it's going to cause multi-system effects or symptoms, meaning that it's going to affect like the cardiovascular system and gastrointestinal, just multiple, multiple systems, and usually does something not so great to the vascular tissue. A lot of these diseases are not actually very bloody, even though hemorrhagic might make it seem like it should be, but a lot of them do involve some blood. In deer, this hemorrhagic disease, this epizootic, meaning that like all over the place disease, does cause some bleeding, but it, it more often causes fever, lethargy. Not every deer that's infected dies, although it does vary in severity. Some deer die within one to three days of infection showing up. But what it's really marked by is these very, very high fevers. In fact, if you find a sick deer lying by a riverbed or water, it, it usually actually is, has this infection. It's lying there because the cool, moist, moist soil can help it with the fever. So the, the cool things about this disease are that it's, it's not actually dangerous to people. Uh, it's spread through biting midges which have a whole bunch of names throughout Virginia, but these biting midges will carry it kind of from deer to deer. But if you get bitten by one that's bitten a deer, it's, it's not gonna affect a person. And actually, if you eat venison that may have been affected by this disease, you won't get sick. That being said, you really shouldn't eat venison that you found that's already dead. Also, some animals that do get infected by this disease do have secondary infections. And if that happens, you, you could get sick. Now, what you mostly notice if you've hunted venison that's been affected by this is that their hoofs are weird. See, one of the really weird things that this disease can do is affect how the hoof grows. The fever is so, so high that it can cause damages, kind of like fever spots on teeth. Another really interesting thing about this disease is that it doesn't really seem to affect wildlife. It may affect bighorn sheep, and there are some elk that might kind of get some symptoms, but aside from that, though there have been deer that have been found, I'm sorry, though there have been cows that have been found that have antibodies, so that have been infected, they've not really shown symptoms, so it seems to really only be a disease of the deer. But it is changing, it is spreading, and that's really something to be concerned about, because anytime these diseases move and spread, it means that there's some change happening that we're not seeing. If you'd like to know any more about this, this epizootic hemorrhagic disease, where we're seeing it in Roanoke or hemorrhagic fevers in general, you can check out any of the links below. Otherwise, I'm Hannah Weiss from the Science Museum of Western Virginia. And hemorrhagic diseases are, are really, really nightmare fuel, but they're also so incredibly cool. <laughs>